Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending this session. Um, this will be a joint presentation between myself, uh, John Ferguson uh, of Deep Wave Digital, and also joining me will be Adam Thompson from the NVIDIA Corporation. Uh, so the majority of what we're going to be talking about in this presentation is um, how to leverage GPUs in modern software-defined radio. Um, so GPUs tend to be used for uh, two key roles uh, as term, in terms of processors for uh, software-defined radios. Um, you can kind of lump them into two buckets. One is DSP and pre-processing. So we're kind of putting those two together and then deep learning applications. Uh, so in terms of DSP and pre-processing, uh, they're primarily used as accelerators um, to execute highly parallelizable um, DSP tasks. So things like FFTs, stuff like that. Um, the reason why people really uh, like using GPUs for this is because you're able to get speedups typically associated with hardware accelerators like FPGAs, um, but you are actually writing software. Um, so it's easily adaptable, easily changeable, and, and much easier to program um, than something like an FPGA. But you, you know, you're not having to deal with the uh, lower throughputs that are typically associated with CPUs. Um, in terms of deep learning, GPUs are known to be ubiquitous for neural network computation. Um, it, they are also the best supported compute engine for all deep learning frameworks. Um, and then based on what I just said a second ago about you know, writing software, um, being easily adaptable, that allows us to um, keep up with the ever-changing uh, world of machine learning, or the rapidly changing world of machine learning. What we ultimately want to do is have an end-to-end -end workflow that is interesting, that leverages hardware, CPU compute, GPU compute. We wanted to leverage um, signal processing, and we wanted to leverage machine learning. So the example that we're going to be showing here is uh, receiving uh, uh, FM signals, demodulating them over uh, using the CPU and GNU radio, performing some automatic speech detection and automatic speech recognition using some, a combination of GPU, CPU, um, compute, and then ultimately displaying that um, for the user. Um, so think of this as kind of radio automatic speech detection. Um, so if we look a little bit closer into what this flow graph would look like, uh, and all of this is implemented in, will be implemented in GNU Radio. Um, so we start off with our sensor, the, the hardware aspect here. So we have an RF front end, and we have uh, analog to digital converter. Um, we then, uh, because we're using GNU Radio, it'll initially go in, into the, the CPU memory. So we are going to have to do a data copy from the ADC um, to the CPU, which will do some filtering, some um, speech detection. So is there actually a signal there? Um, followed by a demodulation. And then we will need to get into the machine learning parts, which is the, the blue um, boxes here. Um, so we'll do a MEL spectrogram, then have an acoustic model, uh, and then look at various text candidates, and we'll rank and score those. Finally, follow that up with a language model to rescore them, and then display the most likely text output. Um, so you can see that this is very much a heterogeneous compute problem. We're going in and out of CPU, um, in GPU, we're doing machine learning, we're doing signal processing, we're displaying, we have hardware. Uh, we, we feel this is a great example problem. Um, but when it comes to GNU Radio, uh, one uh, thing that you will realize is that, is that you, you know, when you start to do um, GPU processing, what, what ends up happening is the machine learning aspect of it or the GPU processing aspect of it tends to get lumped into one big group. Um, so what, what we in, will end up having to do is taking uh, all of these GPU processes, lumping them into one big Python block um, and to be inserted into GNU Radio. Um, and this is mostly due to, to uh, making the memory management more efficient. Okay, so um, you know, when considering doing signal processing with GPUs, there are a few things that we do care about. Uh, one is the ability to do high performance signal processing operations and an easy to use API, okay? Um, we care about throughput. We wanna be able to do low latency, high bandwidth compute. Um, and we want to, for this particular problem, we wanna make sure that we are future-proofing this for uh, various AI um, APIs. And then of course, almost all compute for signal processing is complex value. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna toss it over to Adam, who's gonna go through our outline, and then he is going to discuss the signal processing and pre-processing aspects of the presentation. Okay, Adam, to you. So one of the themes of GRCon this year is about the integration of accelerators into the workflow. And as John mentioned in the introduction, one of the components and one of the accelerators that we find particularly important here are GPUs. And so GPUs are well positioned to do the fast signal processing that we care about in this community. But also on that same device, we can tie into deep learning and machine learning frameworks like Nemo for speech to text translation, so automatic speaker recognition tasks, um, or PyTorch and TensorFlow for things like modulation recognition um, and wireless fingerprinting and beyond. So we plan in this part of the talk to go over the current capabilities and limitations of the software products targeting signal processing and its connections to the GNU radio community. And in addition, give some, uh, some forward leaning uh, uh, information about future APIs that NVIDIA are working on to push this community forward. So one of the libraries that you may be familiar with is QSignal. So full disclosure, I am the creator of QSignal. It is a pure Python interface to do GPU accelerated signal processing and borrows heavily from the open source SciPy signal library. So QSignal is all free and open source. Kind of the, the elevator pitch for QSignal is if you are familiar with MATLAB's signal processing toolbox or with SciPy Signal, you can kind of get base GPU performance um, with minimal or trivial code change to your application. So we support probably 75 to 80% coverage of the API of SciPy Signal and have particularly expanded upon support for things like phased array applications. So we have an MVDR beamformer, uh, for example, and some, some pulse Doppler processing. Um, and we've also added support for things like a polyphase channelizer. So this is kind of like the classical polyphase channelizer um, with uniform channel sizes and all of that other stuff. Uh, so we have a full list of supported functions within the QSignal documentation. And later in this presentation, there will be links of, of how do you download this and, and where do you see the code. QSignal is all free and it's all open source. One of the things I want to hit on here, and I, this talk is not a QSignal talk, so we'll go really quickly through um, the enabling technology stack. But fundamentally, the design philosophy of QSignal was that if we're starting from scratch to build a library that's going to be widely used in the community, and have a lot of um, interest and support, uh, our goal was to get out features as quickly as possible. So feature first, performance second. And so the quickest way to kind of realize this was to focus and build our software totally in Python, okay? And so there are libraries that build on top of CUDA that expose Python bindings um, that we can leverage to, to kind of put everything together to create a signal processing software package, which is QSignal. And so if you look at the SciPy signal code, so looking just at CPU, you see a lot of NumPy, um, a lot of FFTs, a lot of matrix multiplications, as, as we are all kind of familiar with. And so we can say, let's leverage QPy, which is a GPU accelerated version of NumPy, to do most of the work. And then we can fill in the gaps for performance. We can look for uh, things like deep copies and try to minimize those. And then if there isn't support with a library like QPy, we can create our own custom CUDA kernels via Numba. And so fundamentally, we have four free Python bindings down to custom GP, GPU kernels, excuse me, that we've built um, in, in, in this purely Pythonic environment. So this is what QSignal is, right? It's all about quickly building signal processing code in Python. And so we have this recipe for crawl, walk, run, where first, if you're trying to build this new, uh, this new library like QSignal, um, and, and the same kind of philosophy applies if, if you're not building something just for signal processing, but look for GPU library replacements. So if you see a lot of NumPy in your code, control F and replace with QPy. If you're a data analytics person, 
and use a lot of pandas, uh, you know, control F for pandas and replace with QDF, uh, et cetera. So these are kind of free trivial code changes that automatically give you GPU support. And underneath the hood, all CuPy is doing is it's calling the CUDA math libraries. So you're not having this like massive Python overhead um, in your application. But not all things that we want to do. So the polyphase resampler is a, is a good example um, of, of this. Not all of our applications exist in a drop-in library replacement. So we need to create CUDA kernels. And so we, can, we leverage Numba, um, which is a low-level virtual machine, uh, to do this. And it really simplifies and gives boilerplate code to creating GPU-accelerated functionality within Python. And finally, if that like kind of doesn't give you enough speed or you want to go kind of as fast as possible, we can use these custom raw CUDA kernels. Uh, so essentially this is C++ code that's wrapped into a string and put into a CUPY raw module. So this gives you native uh, CUDA C++ speed, um, but it doesn't force this custom uh, Cython or, or PyBind uh, software layer to do Python bindings. So let's take a look at the API. This is again, this is the QSignal API. So here what we're showing is SciPy signal. So this is just CPU. We're gonna do a quick polyphase resample and we're just timing the compute here. So we're not timing the, um, the host to device to so the, the, uh, the CPU to the GPU memory transfer here. And so if we time this, just the resample poly, uh, this takes about 2.4-ish seconds on a, on a Xeon E5. And as we move to QSignal, everything that you see in the code that's green is what's changed. So instead of QPy, or so, excuse me, instead of NumPy, we import QPy. And instead of SciPy signal, we import QSignal. So trivial code change here, right? And this is 285 times faster than uh, the CPU on a V100. So QSignal works on, it's not just these big data center GPUs, it also works on the Jetson Nanos. So any CUDA-enabled GPU, uh, QSignal fundamentally works. And one of the really cool key enabling technologies that QSignal integrates is this support of what's called the CUDA array interface, which is a standardized mechanism for how we handle on GPU uh, memory within Python. And so what you can do is you can do some, some fast pre-processing within QSignal and then you can move that data object to PyTorch with torch.ass tensor. And if you display the pointers, you can see that the, um, the QPy array that's uh, denoted as SIG there and the torch array both have the same memory pointer. So there has been no, uh, no additional memory copy as we have moved from QSignal or QPy or Numba uh, to PyTorch. So you can join the QSignal community. Um, uh, we have an active community, many of which are within GNU Radio. So I, I very, very much appreciate your support. Um, and the, the Conda install uh, instructions are listed below along with the, the GitHub repository. It's free and it's open source and, and we highly encourage you to, to try it out. So if we look at CUDA acceleration into GNU Radio, there's been a couple of, um, of efforts to do this. We can provide generic CUDA interface for GNU Radio with GR CUDA. Um, it has broad applicability, but is, is slightly difficult to use. And there's also been some efforts for, you know, specific to some of the CUDA math libraries, so QFFT interface to GNU Radio within GR Wave Learner. So again, this is kind of, um, it's easy to use or easier to use, but it's kind of limited in its operation. And so as we look to the future, the GNU radio community, the ideal API kind of looks like a generic uh, integration of a generic library that has been created that's optimized DSP kind of at the core level. So you let someone else do the math, the exposure of the, the CUDA managed memory, um, uh, how do you handle streaming data? And then the GNU radio community could take that library and wrap it into to GR blocks, for example. So one of the libraries that we're working on specific to at NVIDIA is called MATX. And so what MATX is, is it's a C++ header only library that's existing to unify the CUDA math libraries 
and place them behind an easier to use API. And so this is not public yet. We're working on uh, getting approvals to, to open source this, which is gonna be coming hopefully any day now. And so the, the way that you know, someone like the GNU radio community could use MATX is it saying MATX is the engine um, from which you are integrating into, uh, into GNU radio. And so what the overall design goals and philosophies and API looks like is that, again, um, we're trying to uh, get maximum performance by deallocating uh, memory management from processing. So we introduce a concept of lightweight descriptors to our underlying data objects called views. And most of the compute that you do operates on these views. But when you do something like a changing the representation of your data, so if you do a transpose, for example, you're just changing the view. You're not actually invoking any compute. And so again, the idea here is providing an easier to understand API within C++ um, that allows you kind of to get native GPU performance. Um, and if you wanna do FFTs and matrix inversions, you don't necessarily have to learn each of those libraries, right? You would learn MATX. And so what this library looks like um, is, uh, this is an example of just a very, very simple FFT-based resampler. On the left is what Python looks like, and on the right is, is MATX, right? So we have these tensor views, um, but then essentially we just call an FFT, we slice and we do our IFFT. So one of the things that the GNU radio community could do is to wrap a GNU radio buffer um, into one of these views to execute a CUDA algorithm. So we have no additional data copy kind of once GNU radio scheduler supports uh, these GPU buffers. So it's just kind of an idea of some of the fundamental DSP libraries that, um, that the GNU radio community can build upon, uh, particularly with the goal of making GPUs as an accelerator of choice to be uh, more integrated into these workflows. All right, thank you, Adam. I am going to now jump right into the machine learning aspect of this presentation. The implementation that we're gonna be talking about is what we're calling radio ASR, or radio automatic speech recognition. Um, and so we think you should care about this for a few reasons. Uh, you may look at it and say, well, demodulating a FM signal and doing speech to text, that doesn't sound like a difficult problem. Um, you know, both halves of that problem are already solved. Um, but we see it a little bit differently. Uh, the integration of these two disciplines in particular for, you know, this problem, it, it is a great example of how to do that. Um, so it, is, it really is a good example of integrating deep learning tools into radio flows. Um, you should also care because we're, we're only leveraging uh, open source software stacks here. So, so we're, you know, we're looking at open source machine learning frameworks. We're, we're leveraging GNU Radio, Python, all that stuff. So if you're not familiar, NVIDIA's Nemo is, you know, toolbox is, is very, very useful. Um, it's a toolkit to develop state-of-the-art conversational AI models, just like it says there. Um, essentially, it has a lot of tools that interact with different CUDA, CUDA toolboxes. Um, it, it leverages PyTorch or PyTorch Lightning. It contains libraries for ASR and LP, TTS. Um, but very importantly, it has a lot of pre-trained models. So that means that you don't really have to train a whole bunch of models uh, on your own. You can, it's, it works out of, it works pretty well out of the box for voice recognition or natural language processing or speech synthesis. Okay, so now let's talk about the specific implementation that we have here um, for Nemo within GNU Radio. Um, so here is our GNU Radio flow graph. Um, you start off on the left-hand side. The squiggly lines there are the um, RF signal coming in. Um, and then we get into GNU Radio where we have our SOAPy source block. So we are leveraging the Deep Waves ART radio here. Um, and so we, we sample the RF data, and then we send that to a low-pass filter. We then run that through a power squelch. Um, and if we break squelch, then that goes to a narrowband FM uh, demodulation, and then we go to GNU Radio's Python block, where we have in, we have created an embedded ASR um, code in there. <clears throat> 
Um, so you all see, if you look at this embedded Python block and we have the, the, the code down here below, um, what we are doing is just, just leveraging the built-in uh, Python block. Um, and, and you'll notice a couple of things. One, on line three, we're importing from, um, from our radio ASR, we're importing a speech inference um, tool. Um, and that is the main function of the work uh, of the work function here uh, in in the Python block. Um, the reason why that is, you know, basically every, everything is contained in a separate function is because we have to leverage GPU compute in order to do this. Um, and as of right now, uh, GNU Radio does not uh, handle GPU buffers so that we kind of have to um, put it all into one um, big blob of Python code, so to speak. But let's let's look at what that big blob of Python code looks like. Um, so here I am showing kind of the overview of what the AD, AD, radio ASR algorithm does. Um, so we have a 16 kilohertz audio rate coming in from our demodulator. Um, and then we do our pre-processing. So that would be the, a, a MEL spectrogram. If you're not familiar, a MEL spectrogram, um, basically instead of having evenly spaced frequency bins, it divides it up into frequency bins where um, each bin is about what the human um, ear can detect. So it's, it's based more on the human ear resolution. Um, and so it ends up being kind of like a log scale. Um, so we go through the MEL spectrogram where we have frequency versus time. Um, each time bin is 20 milliseconds for this uh, algorithm. Um, and then the z-axis is power. Um, once we have our MEL spectrogram, we then go through QuartzNet. So QuartzNet is a pre-trained model available um, with NEMO. Um, and it turns each of these 20 millisecond um, columns into a probability distribution of which letter of the alphabet it is. And you'll see that we have 27 characters because we're including a space. So the 26 letters of the English language plus a space bar space bar plus a, a space character um so you know if it's the highest probability is b b will be you know like 80 percent probability um so you end up with with that distribution for each column um and each column then uh, gets converted to the most probable letter we then run that through a text candidate algorithm this basically runs through a dictionary um and says you know what is the most likely case of, of what these words are um, so this is actually a CPU process um, currently. There's no reason why it couldn't be on a GPU or, or many algorithms will combine it with the acoustic model. Um, but at the end, what you end up with is a beam of, we call a beam of text. So each row represents a specific sequence of characters that are words um, that are to be um, you know, looked at for, for and fed into the language model. So you define how many beams you want to find uh, and we, we chose 24. Um, and then finally, you send that to a language model. This is a neural network that is uh, executed on the GPU. Um, and so you take those 24 beams um, and you rescore them. So uh, from the text candidate section, you know, each, each beam had a probability um, with you know, how accurate we, we think it is. Um, you rescore those now with the language model and that's what you end up outputting is, is the most probable beam there. Um, so a few things to note here. This is a heterogeneous compute problem. So we are going CPU and GPU, um, transferring memory between. Um, the, you know, the entire flow ends up being a single Python block, as I mentioned before in GNU Radio. Um, and so we end up having to, to build that as standalone Python code and then implement that in, in GNU Radio. Call that from GNU Radio. But if you look at it, it really looks a lot like a GNU Radio flow graph. Um, so, you know, in an ideal world, we could make each of these independent GNU Radio blocks and be able to move memory uh, between them, which is, is hopefully something that, that uh, we should be able to do in a future version of GNU Radio. Fingers crossed. Um, so the platform that we chose to implement this on is DeepWaves Air T. Um, this makes it, you know, th this platform makes it super easy to do this because it's got the built-in NVIDIA Jetson GPU. Um, block diagram is shown there on the right-hand side. Um, so it's got the analog devices 9371 chip. Um, data goes to a Xilinx FPGA. That FPGA does decimation of the data down to the rate you want. RDMAs it over to the NVIDIA Jetson. 
Um, that NVIDIA Jetson is really nice because it has shared memory between the CPU and GPU, so we don't have to have extra memory copies once we're in that world. Um, it runs you know, Ubuntu 1804, makes it very easy to program on um, and, and ideal for this type of problem because of this memory management um, that, that is taken care of for you. Um, so what we have done, we've, we've implemented all of that, that GNU Radio flow graph, so we're, so we're operating in GNU Radio here. Um, you know, this is un, untethered speech to text. Uh, we have demonstrated that this has the ability to work with broadcast FM. Um, so we, you know, demodulate NPR and, and um, you, know, uh, you know, stream that, that to a text file. Um, GMRS is, is the one I'll show you in a second. Um, so that's, you know, demodulating narrowband FM. Um, that's, you know, a handheld radio that, like, like you see there. Um, and then we use Nemo for all of this. So Nemo ASR running natively on the RT using the GPU. And you'll see the GPU only leverages about 7% of the GPU cores for this processing. Um, so what I'll show you now is, uh, you know, oh, if, if you do wanna see this actually function in the real world, um, the, the deep wave um, people over at our booth at the GNU Radio Conference will be running this uh, live and you'll be able to talk into a two-way radio and, and see the speech to text. Um, so all of this is from pre-trained models using using Nemo. And what I'll show you here is uh, Jeff Zarita, who is going to be at the booth, um, spoke the Gettysburg Address into a two-way radio. Um, and we received that with the ART and, and ran the radio ASL. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Yeah, so um, you see it's not perfect. Uh, it used uh, the word fourth as in the number as opposed to fourth as in brought forth. Um, you know, so it, it's not perfect, but it is a great demonstration of how to do this and, and an excellent place to start to build, um, you know, a, a, any machine learning uh, algorithm with uh, that, that includes signal processing. Um, okay, so looking forward, you know, all this was great. We had to jump through some hoops, though. So what is it that we would really want? And, and this isn't meant to be dictating what, what uh, the GNU Radio um, community should be doing. It's more meant to just kind of be food for thought. Um, but, but ultimately, you know, wrapping machine learning and GPU processing into a single block is kind of cumbersome. It's definitely not very modular. And modularity is one of the key aspects that, that you know, makes software-defined radios appealing. Um, so in an ideal world, we would want independent GPU blocks or independent machine learning blocks that, um, th that can process each one of these steps. And, and it looks like that might actually be possible in future versions of GNU Radio where they're going to handle GPU buffers. Um, so future architectures we believe are going to contain heterogeneous compute. So we need to be able to move data easily between FPGAs, CPUs, GPUs, and maybe even neural processors when, when they become uh, mainstream. Um, and then uh, Adam spoke to Matt X. Um, we think that the, its ability to leverage views and, the, and that API's ability to interact with commercial APIs such as GNU Radio um, is, is going to be very, very useful going forward, um, especially once, as soon as GNU Radio is able to handle GPU memory. Um, so with that, um, I will speak for myself and Adam and say thank you very much for your time and, and I hope you enjoyed this talk and we will stick around for uh, any questions that you may have. Uh, last but not least, references. So here is all of the open source libraries that we leveraged for this work. Uh, so this is John Ferguson, CEO of Deep Wave Digital uh, and Dan Bryant along with him. Uh, did you have anything that you wanted to point out first? Um, no, I guess uh, I would just say, you know, it seems like a lot of people have gone over to the booth and tested the ASR stuff, did that. So we're happy to answer any questions. And I think Adam's still in the chat answering questions as well. Yes, that's one of the things we've been finding is that um, so many questions get answered in chat. There's not usually so many live ones, but is there any uh, here in the audience? So I, I think that many of the questions were already asked at the booth and um, I live in the chat channel. What, I guess from my perspective, what uh, pieces in the GNU Radio side would you consider most useful 
to enable these sorts of flows uh, to work more smoothly. Uh, is it just the buffer management, or are there other steps that could be taken? So I think it's mostly buffer management. We are extremely excited about the new scheduler work and new buffer management work it's that the Black Link folks have been working on and is incoming um, to mainline GNU radio. I think that plus some of the things that Adam has been working on with MATX, which use that buffer management and do signal processing on views of GPU buffers, um, I, I think that makes is what makes all this possible. Uh, one of the things that was brought up uh, was a concern that uh, some of the existing libraries are in Python, and so if you're using them from the GNU Radio side in Python, uh, this may be a deficiency in the GNU Radio scheduler, but we do the data transfer from C++ to Python and then back. Um, are there are any of these tools ones that would help avoid that issue, stay in a pure, pure C++ data transfer environment? Um, um, so again, operating on views that you, you can go from, can take your memory buffers from C++ to Python and back several times without copying and then use them in with whatever library you want to, um, you know, without incurring additional overhead there. And those memory views are, are becoming compatible between those or is it just literally the concept of uh, basically passing raw pointers and, and hoping that libraries are able to handle that? It, it's really the concept of, of raw memory space, and then each library interprets it um, how it wants to. And a, lo a lot of that on the Python side is enabled by the Python array interface. And with libraries like CuPy, you have the CUDA array interface, um, which is a similar buffer protocol, but also manages the, the CUDA host and device pointers. Thank you very much, uh, yeah, thank John. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in person next year. Hopefully. Thanks, guys. Thank you.